All right, let's see if I can hold this camera steady and zoom in a little bit more. That's going to be what we're after. Let's see if we can get him in. Dang it. I'll see if I can get my rifle out and get him. That's some good, delicious groundhog. Not necessarily, you know, not to mention I'll be doing the, the service for the creek because them things are killers. They are, look at him, just sitting there waiting on the next suspect. The next unsuspecting person to come up and down the creek so he can attack him. But uh, we'll see if we can't get him here and uh, go from there. Yeah. All right, there we have it. Uh, fresh from the hayfield. Our, uh, just your regular old standard groundhog. Uh, one headshot with the uh, 22 long rifle, more than enough to do the trick. So uh, we're going to hang him up and get the skinning, and uh, we'll get right back with you. All right, y'all, here we are out here. I'm going to skin the groundhog at our skinning section. This is our butcher station, our little skinning section. All I got is this 2x4 between this tree and the, uh, the barn there where we butcher everything at. Uh, skinning, you know, when we butcher rabbits and everything else. I uh, got the groundhog hanging. These are just some uh, pieces of bank line that with a, a loop at the end. That way you can take and uh, pass your string through the loop and make you a little slip knot for the uh, to hold the feet so that you can hang it. I like to skin everything if I can while it's still warm because it always seems to skin better. So there's a like this. The old skinning knife that I got from my Uncle Buck, huh? Buck knife. This thing is, you know, when you find your favorite knife, it's just that's just the one that you go with. And this is by far my favorite skinner right here because of the shape of the blade, and you can really get in there and, and work the skin off. Skinning the groundhog isn't any different than skinning any other animal. Um, just like when I skin the coons or when we skin rabbits, I do it the same way. I start around the ankle. <coughs> Work my way around, all the way around the foot like that. This is going to be a good, good groundhog. Got a lot of fat, good meat. This is this year's hog. This is going to be some good eats right here, y'all. We may do some fancy cooking with this on like a Big Meat Sunday and do a, a sous vide groundhog. He always does steaks and fancy stuff, but uh, we don't do fancy. So we'll do sous vide groundhog at some point. All right, now I'm just gonna take and run my knife through. Right down to the vent, uh, the animal vent, AKA bunghole. Uh, do the same on both sides. The groundhogs are, uh, they got a, a dark meat, kind of like a coon. They don't taste like a coon. Uh, they're a little bit, uh, they're, they're, they're grazers. They only eat grass. So they've got a bit of a uh, venison almost flavor to them. And if you cook them up just right, which we'll do a video when we cook them up, you cook them up just right, they are definitely worth what little bit of effort you have in it. And of course, we'll save the uh, the hide, the skin for the menu wall out there on the shed. Now this is a female groundhog, so we're going to have to split split the hide in between the. Uh, I don't know how you put them politically correct the the poop hole and the pee hole, the the bung hole and the cooter or whatever it is that you want to call them there, in between the two things there, split the taint and uh, keep bringing your skin off. And once you get the uh, skin down a little ways, then you can start working that hide right off of the, right off of the. It's starting to get, uh, today is the middle, it's uh, November 20 something or other today. 23rd. 23rd. So it won't be long and these groundhogs will be in for the winter. So I'm glad we got her when we did. This is one of the last of the summer treats that we'll be getting for the year. And uh, they definitely are a summer treat, by the way. They make really, groundhogs really cook up nice. Especially this one here, so all the fat that's on there. 
it's gonna be nice. Now, see I'm just getting, cutting through the fat there, cutting through the old reproductive organ thing. <coughs> Want just the hide. Get the hide going and once you get them going, it'll come off pretty easy. You can pull it off like anything else. Let me get my knife to sit up here. Take my fingers and work it around the legs. Oh, there's still a tendon right there. Oh, and the hide is still attached right there. It's not, I remember when you're skinning something, it's not a race, okay? You're not, you don't, you're not trying to go fast. You're trying to do good. You don't want to damage the meat. You don't want to damage the hide. Uh, so if you're like us and you save the hides, uh, we save our hides and, and, and use them for decorations. Uh, and sometimes if you get lucky enough, you can find somebody that'll buy one. And if a good winter coon or a good winter coyote, you can find somebody that'll buy it. So you don't want to damage the animal when you're skinning. So go slow, take your time. You're not in a race. You're not trying to prove anything to anybody. And if you are, then stop it. Get it working, get it going good. Get it doing it the right way. Now it should start pulling off here pretty easily. I love skinning them when they're still warm. They're so much easier to skin. A lot of times you don't have that option if you got them in a trap or you're hunting in the winter time. Uh, you really don't have the option of uh, skinning them when they're warm. The tail, I'm going to split the tail. On the, they got a little bit of a tail in the groundhog here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my knife right down and split that tail so that I can get the bone out of the tail. I don't want the bone in the tail because it'll make the tail rot instead of tan. So I just take my fingers like this and pinch the tail together to make it tight and just run my knife blade right down the tail like that. I hope that's in the shot. Now just start removing everything. Getting that hide ready to peel it off like it's a sock. And yeah, sometimes groundhogs have been notoriously tough to skin. Another good reason to do them while they're warm if you're groundhog hunting. And I know guys go groundhog hunting with all kind of big rifles and you know, today we're gonna hunt groundhogs with a 470 Magnum or whatever. I, 22 long rifle is good enough. As you can see, it did the, it did the job. <laughs> Doesn't really matter what kind of gun you're using, as long as you accomplish your goal of dead groundhog in the freezer. Like I said, y'all, this may be boring, but I like to take my time when I'm skinning to make sure that I do a good job of skinning them. That's where this little round part of the blade comes in handy, by the way, when you're just following the following the membrane down to the skin. You can follow it all the way down and just use the very tip of your knife to make sure that you get uh, just a hide and not uh, not make holes in it and not uh, you know any of that kind of stuff. Of course, we got our helper here, Dakota, the goat. What is it, Dakota? You ready to take over, man? All right, here, finish. All right, well, go away then. I'll use my horn. All righty. See if I can't work my fingers now around the back, around the back underneath the tail.
Alright, got it. We're just going to pull that right off the tail. I didn't get all the tail, but that's okay. I do that all the time. I got most of her tail. <laughs> so, now we just can take it right down like it's a sock and just pull the sock right off. Look at all that fat. She's a good fat groundhog. Of course, we don't want to eat that fat because the fat tastes like poo. But you could save it and use it. it tastes like chicken fried poo. Yeah. <laughs> you could save it and use it to, uh, uh, you know, you can cook it down and use it to dress your boots and dress your leather and stuff like that for a protectant, uh, like you can on any other kind of uh, uh, animal fats. I am not going to do any of that. I'm going to just discard most of the fat. is just so intrigued. Mm -hmm. You better be glad it's not you hanging from the tree here, Dakota, getting skinned. I'm leaving. <laughs> Let me get around on this thing. I guess a lot of people don't realize that you can even eat groundhogs or they wouldn't ever consider the groundhog as being uh, something that you would want to eat, but they are really tasty. You can see that it's a darker meat and it's, I would compare it to a venison. Just keep working that hide straight down. Removing a coat. Old timers, Uncle Bill. Remember when Uncle Bill was here? He said he loved his chicken fried, fried just like chicken. A groundhog. Of course, Uncle Bill also said it takes a lot of pancakes to shingle a doghouse. So I don't know. There's the bullet hole when I got her. Got to work around that so I don't rip her open. Which I think is a little too late. I think I already ripped her. Alright. I hope I'm not boring the crap out of you guys with all this. Some I've had a couple of people say they wanted to see the groundhog. They wanted to see the... You know, not necessarily the hunt, because we don't really hunt them. We just shoot them out of the hayfield whenever they're there. But uh, the skinning process, anyway. And like I say, we'll do a video on cooking it up, too, whenever we go to cook it. Now you're down to the front legs here. So we can just try to turn the hide back away from the meat. There's going to be there's gonna be meat on the hide as well, but we'll take care of that in the fleshing process whenever we start tanning it. Which I reckon I'll show you guys that too. I've had some people ask me how I do the hides. I do them the easy, easy, easy way. Get down here to the, the legs. Just try to work your thumb through. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Like I say, groundhogs sometimes are a little pretty tough. Tendons get weighed. Membrane gets in the way. 
Yeah. I can feel her stretching. Right, we'll just, we'll just have to do it. <laughs> have to do it this way. Make it a long, boring video. You can see I'm just using the very tip of my knife there. Just running the tip of it along, just working that hide a little bit at a time. Yeah, it'll take some time. This is going to be like a freaking hour and a half long video, man. I'm going to hurry up and get this thing done. Alright, I got my finger through. Put my knife down so I don't cut my fingers off. Just take my elbow joint. Pull it high down to the foot. Ready to pop. And I'm just going to take and cut the hide right off of her foot. Like that. And start working on the next one. So anyway, you guys get the general idea how we're taking the hide off. We're just moving it down, working it slowly down. I've heard people say groundhogs would make good emergency food, but you know what? Groundhogs make good food. No sense of waiting. No sense of waiting until something happens before you go out and try to hunt. some music with our skinning video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's a rough on the skin. Elbow in this arm, we we'll make a little slit right there because I can see this starting to kind of want to tear and pull it right straight down <clears throat> to the foot. Pop up. How's that fold? Cut the hide right around the foot, just like that. Now, if I was going to be keeping this hide to try to sell it, which I don't, can't imagine there's a big market for groundhog hides. Hat. Hide hat coat. Yeah, maybe back in the day, but not They don't anymore. have a very thick winter pelt either. That's why they hibernate. So, there's an ear. I'm going to cut right through the ear. Do the same on the side over here. Cut right through the ear. She heard him coming, but couldn't move fast enough. The eyes. <laughs> Those next. Look at that jaw meat. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yep. Good chops. Just pulling it right. Just keep working it straight on down. I see you, but I can't do nothing about it. Just 
Anyway, I'm going to cut it off right there by the nose and the teeth. There's your groundhog hide that we're going to tan. Hang on the menu wall. And there's your groundhog. Now from here on out, it's just pretty much uh, you want to check. Make sure that uh, you don't have these little glands down here in the armpits. You want to make sure you get them off of there. They should come right off with the fat, those little glands. There might be some up here in this fat on the back too. Get rid of all that. Cut out all this fat that you can. And I will save you guys the gutting process. Uh, if you want to see something, everything's the same, gutted the same way. When I gutted that coon, uh, that coon skinning video that I did a while back, all you do is just split them right through here and clean out all the, the guts in the intestines. But we're going to stop this one here because it's already been a while skinning this thing. I don't want to make a Longer. super long video. It's really, really boring. So what I will do is whenever I split her open, I will check the liver to make sure that there's no yellow spots on the liver and the lungs. And if there's no yellow spots, then she's healthy. And uh, the next video that we'll do will be tanning tanning on the hide and uh, cooking her up. So for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. God bless the end. Buzz, buzz, the end.